It's a trying and talking today, guys. We are trying some new makeup, and the question on the floor is this. If a brand advertises a product of which they are consistently out of stock, do they owe you an apology? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I am Kimmy. This is my attic. I certainly hoping you are all having a wonderful week. It feels so weird. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, but it feels weird for me to say that because it's actually Sunday. <laughs> like, I'm filming this on Sunday, but I know I'm going to upload it on Wednesday, so I will, will wish you a happy Wednesday and hope you're all having a great week. It's almost over, even though it hasn't started yet. <laughs> Today, guys, let me show you. I just had it. Where to, where'd I put it? Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> it is one of those nights. Here's the thing. I have to tell you guys, I am so so tired. I am so tired, but it's Sunday night. Tomorrow is the beginning of a five-day grind. For those of you who know, you know. And if I don't sit down and film tonight, I'm not going to film because nothing happens after work. Whenever I tell myself I'm going to do something after work, unless it's something I absolutely have to do, it usually doesn't happen. By the time I get home and get whatever I have to do done and like feed Maggie, take her out, whatever the case may be, it is, it's like time to go to bed and start over again. So it's just like, I was like, let me go ahead and film. So this is what we are trying today. I have like a little thing of goodies here. Star of the show is probably these three products. These are the new products from e.l.f. There have been a ton of videos, but I haven't watched any of them. So we're going to go ahead and try. I have the contour. I have the blush. I have the highlight. Um, they are supposed to be dupes for Charlotte Tilbury beauty wands, I believe, beauty light wands. Now, um, I only have one, <laughs> but when we get into this, I'll, I'll, talk to, I'll talk to you about this. So Charlotte Tilbury, I only have one because they're like $42 a piece. I have the highlighter, but they also had blush and contour. So a lot of, I did see some like thumbnails and I believe there's a lot of comparisons out there between the two. I can't do that, like I said, because I only had one because I didn't want to spend another 42 on the blush and the contour, full disclosure. Um, Euthphoria, Euthphoria, we're gonna try this primer. I did break my, um, game plan a little bit. I got this during 21 Days of Beauty. This was not on my list. For those of you that know, I did a video where I decided what I was going to buy and I was going to stick to it. I think this is the only thing I fell off the wagon with, but I don't know. I'm actually going to do a video um, the first week of May. 21 Days of Beauty, one month later. And we'll get into it. Um, but I did buy this. So we're going to go ahead and give it a try. Um, yeah, it's a primer. Euphoria pre-game primer. We'll see. I have a new concealer, folks, from Huda Beauty. This is the Glow Wish. I just got this. I just picked it up at the Sephora sale. Um, I didn't buy... I'm going to talk about all of that actually in that same video. But yeah, so I just got this, so we'll try it out. I absolutely love the Glow Wish foundation. I know a lot of people didn't like it. It's not very high. It didn't get very high marks, but I really liked it. So this is a sheer concealer. So I think it's just supposed to like brighten up your under eyes. We shall see. And um, I have a new Sigma palette that I'm going to try for eyeshadow. This is Beachy. This is one of their new on-the-go palettes. So Sigma, I actually think I'm going to start... No, I'm not going to start with this. We'll do the primer and the concealer and then we'll do this. But let me just say, I used to always say Sigma was one of my favorite brands. I think I'm going to tweak it and say they're one of my favorite eyeshadow brands because I can't say I'm in love with all of the products that I have tried from Sigma. Um, their blush, their, their blushes I'm not always happy with, their bronzers I'm not always happy with, um, but their lip products I'm not always happy with. But their eyeshadow for the most part, with the exception of their Disney collabs, and I know it's an unpopular opinion, but their eyeshadows for the most part I'm always happy with. So I believe last year, or possibly the year before, they came out with the first on-the-go palettes. There were six of them, if my, I'm not mistaken. They're these little nine pans. They're really, really cute. They have very, very simple packaging. No, no, no mirror, but that's okay. I believe they retail somewhere around $30. So if you can get them on sale, because Sigma has a lot of sales, they are very, very worth it. They are great for travel. They're very neutral for the most part. Um, but Sigma usually does neutral palettes, and the formula is wonderful. So they came out with six, and I had bought three, which I decluttered all three, and now I have another one. I know. 
I know guys the thing is I usually when I reach for Sigma I reach for one of my 14 pans so and Sigma also makes small palettes based on their 14 pan palettes these are not them these just stand alone but when they came out with the new ones I had to get them I just had to try so I purchased this one beachy and I also purchased the pink one whatever that was called the pink one I purchased because I'm hoping that it will replace my Dior because I have the Dior Cool Neutrals palette, which I will be decluttering in my next declutter because it's not cruelty free, even though I absolutely love it. I'm hoping that that can like sort of replace it. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the primer. So the question on the floor, as I said, when I open this up, and I also have a drink. So if you wanna go grab yourself a drink, grab a drink, grab a drink. Let's try makeup, let's talk, let's just chill. Okay, so, um, oh, and I need a mirror. I kind of switch the attic around, so I have most things using my ColourPop Snow White mirror in vicinity to me. I hope this is for, actually, is this cruelty-free? Use Foria. It just, I just dawned on me if it's cruelty-free or not. Um, okay, so we're back. There's nothing like the last minute, guys, I'm telling you. That's been my life lately. Yeah, they are cruelty-free brands. And honestly, wasn't this the brand that was on Shark Tank? It's kind of all coming back to me. That's what it looks like. I think they were on... Sh no smell. They were on Shark Tank, I think. I think that's like how they started. I don't, I don't know. I should, why do I say stuff? I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Hello, Maggie Mae! My God, I can't believe Maggie Mae is still awake. She has to be so tired. I'll tell you why in a second. But the question on the floor, guys. The question on the floor. If a brand advertises something that they are in, con, not inconsistently, consistently out of, do they owe you an apology? So with the brand that we're talking about, this feels nice. Now, I don't have a foundation. I know this is stupid. I'm not trying a foundation today. But... This actually feels really nice on my skin. I have very dry skin. I will test it out though under a foundation eventually and let you know. But to wear alone, yeah, ooh, this feels really nice. I have to say, this feels really nice. Mm. Okay, so the brand I'm talking about is 100% pure. Um. Guys, sorry if you can hear Maggie in the background growling up a storm. Um, she's playing under the bed or under the pillow, something, I don't know. <laughs> She's probably about to have the zoomies because it's that time of night. Um, so the brand I'm talking about is 100% pure. By the way, I am in 01 Fair. We're going to go ahead and try this concealer or sheer concealer, whatever you want to call it. Apparently, 100% pure, I believe it was on Instagram, they did a advertisement, an advertisement for their tint, I believe one of their cheek sticks, um, cheek tints in the... It looks like a lipstick, but it's a cheek tint. I can't remember what they call it. it it's a cheek tint. And um, they must be consistently out of this product, which is not surprising because it's the problem for 100% pure. The thing is, I love 100 Oh, So let me finish the story first. So they did this advertisement, and there were a lot of people in the comments that were like, why do you keep advertising stuff that you don't have? Like, I wish I could get this, but I can't. The company doesn't really, never has it. And, um, yeah, people are upset. And then there was another group of people that were like, well, obviously their product is good. Like, why are you mad at them? Because they sold out. That's not right. So there were, like, two schools of people here. So let me tell you my opinion. I am very, very familiar with 100% Pure. I absolutely adore the brand. I think what they do is so unique. I don't know if there's any other um, brand on the market. 100% Pure makes like natural products. They make fruit pigments in makeup. They make skincare. They make hair care. But I think one of their main products is their fruit pigments in makeup. So when I had a nickel allergy, um, I turned to them because a lot of their products I could wear because they're not made with iron oxides, they're made with fruit, the pigments of fruit, which is amazing. So I was very, very grateful and thankful 
grateful and thankful to find them because it meant that I could wear some makeup. Um, I don't know of anyone else that does it. Their products are simply lovely. But the, there, there are some things that I'm not crazy about, but for the most part, their products are lovely. They have some amazing people working there. I have dealt with the customer service. Um, really, really nice company. Their one drawback, and actually it was one of my first videos that I did was on 100% Pure. Um, their major drawback is their inventory. Okay, so Huda is not lying when she says there is no coverage. On the flip side, and but it's a, but it's a sheer concealer. She's not telling you there's coverage, so we're not going to hold that against her. It's nice. I'm not sure if it's doing anything for my under eyes, like really brightening them up. I usually compare brightening to the Tarte Glow Wands, which I can't, I'm not using Tarte anymore. It's heartbreaking, but um. I usually compare anything that says it glows to the Tarte Glow On because that makes your under eyes boom. This really doesn't. Um, I'll keep using it, but to be honest with you, I don't, I don't see a difference. It's not sinking into any lines, which is great. It doesn't look dry, which is great, although it might be my under eyes because my under eyes have been getting better. I've been like doing my skincare routine like religiously and my under eyes have been getting better. But at the same time, yeah, guys, I can't say it's, like, amazing or anything. It's, it's okay. I would say it's okay. It doesn't sink into lines. It doesn't, it's not supposed to give you coverage. All it's supposed to do, I think, is make you look, like, more awake, like, brighten up. I think it sort of does. It sort of does, but not as bright as the Tarte one, if that makes sense. But it's not bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit the palette, the beachy palette. I'm going to put... Um, over here, swatches. <laughs> okay, so we have three mattes, four mattes, five shimmers. I'm just going to go ahead and I think do kind of like, what will I do? I'm going to do maybe these two shades. I think we're going to try all the browns and maybe this shimmer and the blue. I think that's what I'm going to do. Now, oh yeah, there are names, there are names. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me just go grab some brushes. So yeah, so that video that I did was easily over a year ago. And apparently it's still an issue. If you go on to the website, here's the thing. Like I said, people were very, very, actually, I kind of do like this under eye. Um, people were very, very split, but I'm going to make an assumption. First, I'm going to go in with I think, I don't know. I'll go in with coastline. I'll go in with coastline. So, I'm going to make an assumption. I'm going to make an assumption and think, say that the people who said that you can't hold it against a brand because they're good and, you know, they sell out, that's a good thing, probably aren't so used to 100% pure. I'm going to assume that the people who are really upset are people who are... Fans of 100% Pure and um, fell in love with their products. And the problem is they can't get them. They can't get them, okay? If you go on to the website, to be honest, it is an issue. Most of, I would say at any given time, like 50% of the shades or um, the colors, if it's like a blush or the shades or if it's a um, foundation, are out of stock. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating, and very often, like, the entire product will be out of stock. Um, it's very common. I have been waiting for their, like, glowy, um, found it's not a foundation, it's like a skin tint. They're like glowy skin tint to come back in stock for I can't even tell you how long. And yeah, they have a huge problem with inventory. Um, and what's happening, I think, now is I'm going to go in with Driftwood. No, I'm going to go with Boardwalk on the crease. I think what happens now is this getting, the problem is like getting worse because um, people love the products because the products are amazing, but they know there's an inventory problem. So when the products do come back in stock, they buy them up. And that just makes the whole problem start all over again. And you can't even blame them because for stocking up because the products are so freaking hard to get. So... 
100% pure came on, and now I have to give it to them. I have to give it to I, I understand both sides. Both sides. But because I'm someone that um, is used to this problem with 100% pure, because I'm such a fan, I have to say, do they owe us an apology? Maybe not. But I think they do need to address it. Because why are they advertising these products over and over again. When you see a product advertised on Instagram and you click on it and it's out of stock, okay, fine. But it's out of stock, like, it just never comes back, but it's consistently advertised, it could get annoying. And it could get even more annoying if you're someone that's tried it, really, really enjoys it, know you love it. Another thing with 100% Pure, some people are probably using it and that's like the only thing they can use, and you can't get it, and the company just keeps advertising it and advertising it. It is frustrating. So, do they owe us an apology? No. Nobody owes us anything, but I am glad that they are addressing it. I think it's very, um, like, stand-up of 100% Pure to address it. So, 100% Pure came back. Um, I can't remember what they said. Did they say say, you know what, let me go ahead and grab my phone because I want to read it to you what they said. Okay, so it was on Instagram and this is what it said. This is what Susie said. She said, I just saw all your angry comments. I'm sorry we're posting out of stock items. There's a few emojis on here. You're right, it's insensitive and reckless. I'm very sorry. I will do better to coach our team to be more careful. Thank you. So, um... Oh, so she also posted, my sister-in-law texted right now about the angry comments and I wanted to quickly get on to tell you how sorry I am for us being so insensitive. I know our out-of-stock crisis is bad enough. That is true. But to post the out-of-stock items is like rubbing salt on the wounds. I am sorry for not training our team better. I will mentor them to be more sensitive. Again, I'm truly sorry. I really do miss all of you. See you soon. Um... Every day, when we get, once we get something back in stock, we have five more out of stock. It's like a never-ending cycle. Every single day, we keep making products, but they are selling faster than we can make them. Um, we are transitioning to a bigger makeup facility that can make larger quantity, and we've expanded our skincare production facility in-house. So, um, and then, and then there are people saying that they're too sensitive, like people that are too sensitive, whatever. Um, like I said, there are some people that didn't think it was warranted. I don't think, here's the thing, in today's world, here's the thing, did it really warrant an apology saying it's like rubbing salt on the wounds to uh, post out of stock products? Probably not. Um, I don't think it, it warranted that. But like I said, I think it's good that 100% Pure is recognizing that this is an issue because if you can't get products from a, the thing with 100% Pure, here's the thing, I'm just going to go on with Sam Bar in the crease. I mean, in the inner corner. Here's the thing, 100% pure. It's not like you can just move on to another brand. I mean, you can, but you're not going to be able to get the same thing because there's not a lot of brands, like I said, I don't know if any, that do what 100% pure does. So they kind of have the lock on the market. It's not like, well, I'm not going to buy Maybelline anymore. I'm going to buy CoverGirl. Um, 100% Pure doesn't have that much competition because they don't have, there's not a lot of companies doing what they do, which is why I think they sell out so fast. So I think consumers are even more aggravated because they can't just turn around and go somewhere else. Um, and I think that the fact that 100% Pure got on and recognized this problem is a good thing. It's a good thing that they came out and said something, um, we're working on it, whatever. The, I think I'll believe it when I see it. Because this has been a problem with 100% PR for a very long time. Over a year. Um, I'm going to say two, three years. Since I've been into the brands, I'm going to go ahead and try Sea Glass. I'm dying to try this blue uh, shimmer. Um, since I've been into them, and I was diagnosed with my nickel allergy in 2019. So actually, that's like what? Oh my god, that's like four years. Okay, so for the past four years, this has been an issue. So now, now they're saying that they are, I mean, they've outgrown their business model. That's clear. They have outgrown their business model. So now they say that they're moving to a different facility. They're expanding. It's definitely about time. I think that's a good idea. But it's also one of those things where I'll believe it when I see it. Um, it is true. The second they get a product in, it sells, they, sell, uh, they sell another one out. They just can't seem to keep up. And it does say something good about the company. Company's amazing. Company is absolutely amazing. But they need to fix their inventory. 
So hopefully they will. Hopefully they will. Okay? I think that's all we can say about it. Guys, I would love to know what you think. Have you tried 100% Pure? Do you like the brand? Do um, you think a company owes... Like, look, how about... Um, off the top of my head, because I know I've been trying to get it, is uh, the um, Rare Beauty Highlighters or the Makeup by Mario palette. It's, although I've lost interest in it. I don't even want it anymore. <laughs> but I guess the thing is, like, um, are these consistently, like, advertised? Maybe not. Like, 100% Pure, if you follow them on Instagram, they do consistently, like, advertise these products that they don't have. So, like I said, can you be mad at Rare Beauty? No, for never having a highlighters available? Probably not. Um, can you be mad at Makeup by Mario for not ha making enough uh, palettes? I, I don't know. I don't think so. But with 100% Pure, it is a little different because this has been a problem for years. For years, it's been an issue. And like I said, there's a group of customers that are very loyal to 100% Pure for a lot of different reasons. Makeup, allergies, whatever the case may be. They might not be able to use other brands, so it be can become very frustrating. So I understand both sides. I am very happy that 100% Pure is um, deciding to do something about it. And I would love to know what you guys think if you want to let me know down below. So with that, let me just say, I organized all these makeup brushes. And I did such a good job. And now they're like all over the place again. Okay. So with that, I have to say, I think the palette is beautiful. It's very, very neutral. Um, you can definitely see that blue shimmer though. Sometimes you can't. I have had palettes before with like these kind of shimmers where you can't even see them to be honest with you. This shows up nice. I'm actually very happy with this look. So let's keep it going. So far I kind of like everything that I've used. I even like that Huda um, concealer. It's not, I don't like it as much as Tarte, but Huda's cruelty free, so we'll take it. Okay, so last but not least, guys, last but not least, I need a makeup sponge. Last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and try these Tarte, not Tarte, e.l.f. products. So I have to say, I absolutely love e.l.f., guys. I love them. I e.l.f. has this very special place in my heart because when I was diagnosed with my nickel allergy, e.l.f. was the first brand that I found that actually had like um, nickel free product, like iron oxide free products. I found some eyeliners that I could use that were made with um, not iron oxides. I think they've since been discontinued, but e.l.f. will always hold a special place in my heart. I think what e.l.f. does is amazing. For the price, I think it's amazing. So this is like the newest thing, guys. This is the blush. This is in... Um, Candlelit, but there's more than one. There was more than one shade. So this is a new thing. I, we saw it from Milani. I feel like we saw it from Milani first. We saw it from Milani. We saw it from Tarte. Now we're seeing it from Elf. But from what I hear, these are um, dupes for the Natasha, not Natasha Denona, Charlotte Tilbury. The Charlotte Tilbury has come in somewhere like forty-two dollars, and the Tarte ones are nine bucks. So, this is my Charlotte Tilbury highlighter. I absolutely, I really like it. I've heard mixed things, but I absolutely love it. I think it's beautiful. I'm not going to be using Charlotte Tilbury anymore, but that's besides the point. It's a really, really lovely highlighter. Here, I'm going to go in with the e.l.f. one. Let me see if I can get it out. Here it comes. So, the e.l.f. one is right here. It is, it's not an exact dupe for sure. You can even see on the camera, it's a little different. It's not, it's kind of a different color. Well, that might be because mine's a different color. Um, this is in champagne. But as far as the bling, it's pretty much similar. I mean, come on guys. This is $42, this is nine. Hmm, mm mm, -mm. Gotta love Elf. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one side. I think I'm gonna do that thing where you kind of like do everything and then you blend it out. And I'm gonna do the other side just regular. I'm gonna do start with the other side regular. So I have the contour. This isn't fair. And I have to say when this these first came out like the Milan with Milani, I did say like I don't like the idea of them because they're messy. 
But guys, these are like the new thing, so I have to get used to it. Whoa, that's cool. Cool toned, I mean. Woo, that is cool toned. Okay, let's see. So guys, I have to say, I am so freaking tired today and let me just do it. I just had a makeup sponge, oh, here it is. Okay. So normally when I shoot, I do shoot my videos I do shoot when I'm off from work because, like I said, when I work, nothing gets done. Nothing for YouTube, anyway. Um, and I would normally shoot, like, in the morning. But I went and looked at a home today. The first one I have looked at. So for those of you that watch my channel, I can't even see this on me. And there's no way I would be a medium. Hmm. I can't see this on me. Hmm, mm, mm. Okay, so that's the contour. So I have to say, I think the contour, yeah. I don't, it like went away. I can't see it. It like disappeared. Hmm, there's no way I can eat a medium, right? I don't know. All right, let me go ahead and try the blush. So I am in the shade Candlelit. So what I did today is I went, oh yeah, so like, so those of you who follow my channel, you know that I am moving. Um, wait a minute. Oh, there it is. Okay. Ooh, that is going to be a shimmery blush. Holy cow. I, am, I want to move. I'm not like moving, but I want to move. So, um... Today was the first day that I went and looked at like a home. So normally when I film, I film in the morning, but I couldn't because I was going to look. I wasn't actually looking, looking. I was just kind of looking at the area and like seeing what the place looked like. Like I wasn't like seriously looking, but now I'm thinking that like I want it. It's further than where I wanted to go. So right now I li literally live like five minutes from work which is great but I can't afford to buy in this area like I have a house share I rent I can't afford to buy in this area um so I do have to leave but it's further than I wanted to go so but I loved it <laughs> so there were like a lot of butts but anyway I let went this morning I took Maggie of course I took Maggie she did really really well in the car um it was like the first furthest she's been in the car um yeah I really enjoyed it. I really liked it I liked the area it's a lot more country than where I am now and I could afford it it was really nice but I don't know I gotta think and that's the problem with real estate you don't have time to think it's like it's here and then somebody buys it and then it's gone it's like you can't even think you know by the time you decide well this is gonna work for me or this isn't gonna it, it's gone so you have to go there with like a ready to make an offer and ready to do it. And I'm like someone who wants to like, I want to make the right decision because it's a big step, you know? All right, as far as the, the blush, I think it's pretty, but it's not exactly melting into my skin. I have super dry skin. Um, let me go ahead and try the highlighter. It's pretty. Okay, let's see. I'm going to give you my honest opinion in a second. And I'm kind of bummed about my honest opinion, but on this side, I'm going to try to do all three. So here we go. Here is the contour. The contour is ex the contour in Fair is extremely cool tones. Do you know what was cool tones like this? Do you got <laughs> I look so weird. I'm doing it with the camera instead of the mirror, which probably isn't the smartest thing. Do you guys, what the heck was that brand? Oh, uh, it was a Korean brand. Ooh, I put a lot on. All right, so we're gonna see if we can see it this time. It was a Korean brand. I can't remember the name of it. I have it, I'm gonna pull it out in a second. Was very, very, very cool tones. Very cool tones. That's what it reminds me of. 
Let me put this here. This is gonna be interesting. I put the blush. And these have the things that click on and off, like tarts click on and off. Do these have them? No, not really. So they can also be kind of messy. They can also be kind of messy. These are more like the Milani ones. Okay. All right, we're gonna blend all that out, guys. tell the difference but I don't know if it's because of the way I did it I think I added a lot more on this side so did it like all kind of blend together no it didn't because the highlighter kind of ended up up here <laughs> so for me personally I'm someone that has to do it one at a time I'm just not good I have to wash the sponge I am just not good at this method and I think I put too much contour on but maybe not because, yeah, it, I, hmm. I've seen people do it this way and it comes out beautiful, but I think you gotta be more. It did all kind of melt together though. I can't say it didn't, but I really can't see like where the blush ends, where the highlighter is, except the highlighter ended up like under my eye. So anyway, I think I would go, I would go in like this one at a time. But in any case, guys, let me go ahead and throw some mascara on. And I'll come back and give you my final thoughts. Alright guys, so I just finished up my makeup. I threw a little bit of this mascara on. This is of course by Tower 28. What is it called? Something Waves. But it's, a, it's the only mascara by Tower 28. And on the lips, I put Elf Sheer Slick in Cherry Crush. Alright, so. It just so happened that a piece of paper fell out of this Youth Warrior primer and it's like oh and on the back it says life is messy but your makeup isn't um it's like a skincare meets primer type of thing so you use it as the last part of your skincare or the first part of your makeup and I have to say I think it's lovely it really does make my skin feel good um I have very dry skin it feels really nice on it it's not like really glowy it's just it's kind of nice. I actually really like this, so I am happy that I picked it up. Um, the Glow Wish isn't bad. It's like a sheer concealer. That's exactly what it is. It is not as glowy as the Tarte one. Don't go by me. I got my highlighter up here. That's not this, but it's not bad. This is a better, um, yeah, it's not bad. It's a little glowy. It's not as glowy as the Tarte one. It's kind of like a medium. So if you thought the Tarte one, I think a lot of people think the Tarte one is too glowy, then you might really like this. And if you have dry skin, I think this is really good because it worked really nice on my skin. Okay. Here's the thing. Oh, and the palette. Palette's lovely. Sigma always does a really, really nice palette. Nice, neutral palette. Beachy. It does look beachy. It's like the, the weight, the sand, the water. It's beautiful, beautiful palette for the summer. Really lovely. Um, I would pick this one up. Okay. Here's the thing. So, I have to say, there a lot of YouTubers do those videos where they're under the lights and they walk out from under the lights and they show you what their face really looks like. Um, but there was this one YouTuber, I can't remember her name. And I don't really know how popular she is, but I was watching and she did a video really 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 up close to the camera where she showed you what it really looks like to put makeup on your face and she was like there's a lot of terms that you hear like it melts into your skin it doesn't it sits on top and that's what it does and of course she's right but there are some products that look like they melt in better than others um because I have dry skin, sometimes these pro these cream products are not, you know, they don't always melt into the skin. Although they say that the cream products are better for dry skin. It's not always the case. As far as these products are concerned, I think they're nice. I think they're nice. 
but I don't, I can't say that they're great. Oh, wait a second, guys. It's this. Did you guys ever use this? This is Perfect Cover BB Cream by Misha. Um, this used to be really popular years ago. I don't know if it is anymore. It's like very super cool tones. Super cool tones. And that's what it reminds me of. That's what the e.l.f. contour reminds me of. You see? It's like super cool tones. I think the e.l.f. one is more cool toned than this one. <laughs> I think the e.l.f. cool tone is even more cool toned than this one. If you don't like cool tone contours, you might not be crazy about this one. Um, I'm not sure... What do people think of this? I haven't watched any videos. If I told you guys I haven't been watching YouTube, I have not been watching YouTube, like, at all. I think I've just been too busy. Like, I don't know what the hell's going on with me, but I have just not been watching videos, hardly at all. So I don't know what people said about this, but this is what I think about it. I think it's good. For nine bucks, I think it's good. I don't think it's great. I don't think my camera liked that I said that, but I'm telling you. It's not a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury. It's not as good as the Charlotte Tilbury. No, I can only speak for the highlighter because that's all I have. It is not as good. It doesn't go on as bl nice, blend out as well. It's not as, it doesn't give you the same look. But Charlotte Tilbury is $42. This is nine. Is this worth nine bucks? Yeah, I think it is. It's, it's not bad. It's not as good as the Charlotte Tilbury. It's not, but it's not bad. Like I said, the blush and the contour, I didn't use. They almost disappeared on me. <laughs> Maybe I should have gone for the medium contour, but I find that hard to believe. Um, and the blush, I, I'm, honestly, I didn't care for the blush. I can see it over here. It's like this peachy, I just didn't care for it. Definitely not my favorites. Honestly, I think you could probably, like I said, Elf, it's nine bucks. If you want to try it, go ahead and give it a try. I don't think they're that great. To be honest with you, if you want a contour, I would go with the Milani. I think the Milani made a better contour. And they're all in this kind of messy packaging, so it doesn't matter anyway. I would go with the Milani. The highlighter, I think I would also go with the Milani. Um, the blush, <sighs> Mil Mil Milani does not make one exactly like this, but they do make their cream blushes. They don't have these kind of applicators. I just think that Milani, I think Milani did it better. I do. I think Milani did it better. So I have to say I am a little disappointed, just a little in the Elf products. They are not terrible, but they're not exactly what I expected. And there you have it, guys. There is uh, the new makeup for today. I would love to know your thoughts. Have you tried any of this stuff? What did you think? And what do you think about 100% Pure? Did they do the right thing? Um, addressing the issue. Do they owe us an apology for consistently being out of stock? I think they do have to do better for their customers. They have to do better because it's not an issue of, oh, they're so good they can't keep up. They're out of stock. They're so good they're out of stock. It's an issue of so many products. Probably like 50% of their inventory is out of stock at any given time. And it's been going on far too long. It's been going on for years and it is definitely time for them to address the problem whether it a new manufacturer or whatever the case may be they have outgrown the business model and I think eventually I think one of the the reason that they have not lost their customers is because a lot of they are so unique if they weren't as unique as they are I think customers would have long ago gone to another brand but guys it is what it is and that's what it is I would love to know your opinions down below if you like and what it like oh yeah I already said, let me know what you think of these products. I'm especially curious what you thought of these e.l.f. products because I think they're just so-so. But I would love to know what you think of them. And I got them on my white shirt. Anyway, guys, so now it's going to be laundry tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you liked the video, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. We talk about it all in the attic. Let me know if there's anything you want me to talk about, try, etc. You can also follow me over at Kimmy Teresa on Instagram. I have started doing shorts guys on YouTube. <laughs> I released my first one today and it actually did pretty good. It did better than I thought. I did an empties highlight. Um, and that's it. Next Wednesday, 
What's plans? We're going to do a declutter. We're going to do a face palette declutter. Certainly not my biggest declutter, but a declutter nonetheless. I don't have that many. I don't have that many. I probably have maybe like seven or eight. So it's not going to be a long video, but I, I'm getting rid of. I'm going to get rid of a few of them. You might be surprised. <laughs> anyway, guys, I certainly hope you will join me for that. And until then, as always, please take good care of yourself so you can take care of someone else. And I will see you next week with another video. Bye, guys.